On April the 15th, 2020, the radio was silenced when Zack Ryder was released from WWE. Whilst he wasn't alone that day in being let go, seeing Matt Cardona's name on that list came as quite a shock. We've heard this Z true Long Island story too many times now. The one about the superstar who was punished for having the audacity to get organically popular, who would be held aloft like a trophy and then dropped like a hot plate over and over again, who would create genuine energy only for it to be siphoned off to his peers. The story today is a much brighter one. The one about the professional wrestler who turned every positive negative into a negative positive, who leaned back to push forward and who has proved to a jaded wrestling industry that there truly is a future in future endeavors. My name is Tom Campbell from Cultaholic Wrestling and this is the career renaissance of Zack Ryder. Matt Cardona's release, like many, came as the world stopped. But the man formerly known as Zack Ryder had no desire to stop with it. Amid calls for him to be signed up to AEW, he made his debut in July, coming to the aid of Cody Rhodes in his battle with the Dark Order. He signed a short-term deal with Khan's Carnival, but despite being thrust immediately into the thick of things in wrestling's hottest new promotion, his time there was in the grand scheme of things, pretty underwhelming. It was also over pretty quickly as well, with his final match being in September. You'd have thought that somebody like Cardona, with a polished skill set and an unrivaled creative energy, would have found a firm footing in AEW, but he just didn't. Some questioned that this would be the end of Matt Cardona's wrestling career. Would he explore acting? Would he throw himself into podcasting? After all, his major wrestling figure podcast with former Edgehead ally Brian Myers was proving wildly successful. Just look at the numbers, right? A time of recording the show, which is Matt, Brian and friends chatting wrestling, wrestling figures and a whole bunch of other stuff, was the third most popular wrestling-based Patreon on the planet. So that was easily going to keep Cardona in action figure money, right? It's through the Wrestling Figure podcast that you can see the true passion that Brian Myers and Matt Cardona have for the world of professional wrestling. There's a lot of love when they talk about it. And it even turned into a wrestling show in itself. Figure Wrestling Federation Live saw Matt Cardona and Brian Myers booking their own wrestling show. Brought Maven back into wrestling, which was good to see. No, Matt Cardona still very much had a wrestling itch he wanted to scratch. And scratch he did when he rocked up as a surprise opponent for Ace Austin at Impact Wrestling Hard to Kill in January. He'd butt heads with Brian Myers across multiple shows as well in a feud between the friends that culminated in Cardona bringing back up for a mixed tag match at Slammiversary in the form of his wife, freshly released from WWE, Chelsea Green. It was good to see regular work and consistency from Cardona after so many years of hot and cold presentation. But the true rebirth was happening away from the impact zone. On June the 6th, 2021, reigning GCW champion Nick Gage was attacked by a mystery hooded figure. Now, Nick Gage had been going back and forth with John Moxley as of late. So when this person had the walk of a John Moxley and hit the paradigm shift, John Moxley's finisher, we all presumed it was John Moxley. Except it wasn't John Moxley. The hood was removed to reveal the smug grin and the one middle finger of Matt Cardona, making his official debut in Game Changer Wrestling. Cardona was now part of GCW and presented himself as everything they rallied against. Cardona was a sports entertainer in GCW, blessed with the virtues bestowed on him by Vince McMahon. He told everyone that would listen that he was a GCW superstar. He patronized the GCW fans by constantly referring to them as the GCW universe. And when he defeated Nick Gage in a death match for the GCW championship, he did so 
classing himself as an ECW original, citing his run in the zombified ECW that WWE reanimated in 2010. Cardona's bloodbath title victory over Gage at Homecoming in July was a defining moment in the WWE afterlife of Zack Ryder. He stood in the center of the ring, his all-white gear now crimson, being pelted with bottles and detritus and raising aloft his first ever World Heavyweight Championship. From here, he leaned further into the McMahon machinations, dressing as ECW champion-flavored Vince McMahon for title defenses, complete with swagger and do-rag, and promising slash threatening not only to rename the GCW title to the GCW Universal Championship, but personally fund a new championship belt with a spinner plate. We'd never see these threats truly come to pass, though, as he would drop the title to John Moxley by September. September. Cardona would bring Chelsea Green into the mix for Game Changer Wrestling, and it would just enhance everything that he had going on there. They would enter into a really entertaining rivalry with Bussy, Effie, and Ali Catch that would end with all stocks being raised and Cardona and Chelsea Green storming out of Game Changer Wrestling for good in speech marks. He returned to needle the GCW faithful a little further. He pinned Rhino in Detroit in a match that bizarrely was for Rhino's ECW Television Championship, a belt that Cardona would throw in the bin soon after. He then faced Joey Janela at GCW's biggest ever show at the Hammerstein Ballroom in a match that saw Cardona entering to Metallica's Enter Sandman. The match was filled with run-ins from the likes of Hornswoggle, Virgil in a Vince McMahon mask, and Brian Myers playing the mystery biker from ECW One Night Stand 2006. If you like a lot of meta in your wrestling, this is for you. And Matt Cardona was having the time of his life with it. Cardona as a dirty, rotten, sports entertainment loving heel has turned a lot of heads in wrestling, but his Impact Wrestling run had continued unaffected by this. It got to the point where Impact was the only promotion booking Cardona to play a top babyface. That particular time rip was stitched up when he battered Jordan Grace with a steel chair to take the Impact Wrestling Digital Media Championship. The Impact variant of Cardona is now claiming to be the man who made wrestling video blogs cool, which, if you've been following his work, isn't a stretch of the imagination, to be fair. The latest development in Matt Cardona's post Stanford story is away from the Impact Zone and far away from the maddening hardcore crowd, as Matt Cardona landed in the National Wrestling Alliance just before Christmas last year. It hasn't taken long for a major shift in the NWA, as on February the 12th in Kentucky, Cardona added the 10 pounds of gold to his growing resume, defeating Trevor Murdoch for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. We've seen several incarnations of the former Zack Ryder so far, every iteration hitting a little different from the last. So expect more range from Cardona once he gets the motor running with sweet Charlotte around his waist. Matt Cardona's post-WWE journey has been incredible to watch, not just by fans who have known all along what he was capable of, but by his peers as well. Now ex-WWE talents are saying that Matt Cardona's exploits are reassurance and encouragement to them that things will work out okay outside of the security of a WWE deal. Scotty Tuhotti was one of those who, when we spoke to him for Desert Island Graps back in January, said that seeing Matt Cardona tear it up on the indies was the final bit of encouragement he needed to ask for his release from his producer's role in NXT and get back out into the wild indie wrestling world. There will no doubt be many more who are indirectly thanking Matt Cardona for waking them up and inspiring their next steps. Matt Cardona spent 14 years in the WWE portraying Zack Ryder, desperate to show what he could do, desperate to bring his ideas to life, and desperate to prove he could be money-making in a main event position. As he approaches his two-year anniversary of the budget cut phone call that altered the course of his career, Matt Cardona proved that with perseverance, talent, creative energy, and some blood-splattered white ring gear, you don't need good luck in your future endeavors.